What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video on Cup of Code 01. This is gonna be a video for Python projects. This is called uh, The Dragon Game. And I believe this one from is uh, from Al Seigert, Swigert's book, uh, Python Games. Hold on, I think I have it here. No, I don't, I lied. I think it's, it's something about Python games, but I want to give them the credit where credit is due, uh, but it's it's good code. It's excellent to run through because um, you were defining functions, and then we're actually tying it all together. And this is I also tied it on to the import random one where we did the hundred days of Python with the time saver uh, program, which I may throw into the Python projects also. Even though it's short and sweet, it's it's fun. Um, it's fun. It, it's actually useful, but it's also fun to mess with people when you use it. So I, I'll probably throw it in both. But with that being said. Let's run into this. So we're importing two libraries, importing random, importing time. And then we're going to create our own function so we can just, the whole point of creating your own functions is so you can just call the function and you don't have to write the code each time you're doing it because many times you're going to use the functions multiple times or in different ways, especially if we're doing like booleans, true and false, or if we're doing different iterations. Um, and so of course, yeah, we don't want to keep running the code over and over again. So I'm going to quickly run through this in the order that we're in, and then we'll debug the code so you can see how it's jumping around. So here we just have uh, defining display intro, open and close parents, and then, um, I mean quotes, and then colon, we're printing, you are in the land full of dragons. So it's going to print that on the screen, and then we have time.sleep2. So as we know from the time module, sleep means two seconds. And then after two seconds, it's going to print in front of you. You see two caves. In one cave, the dragon is friendly and will share his treasure with you. The other dragon is greedy and hungry and will eat you on sight. And then we're just adding a escape N for a new line. Now you'll notice I use triple quotes on the beginning and end of that. And that's why I don't have to keep um, quoting each line in the code. I can just have it as a block of, of code with the triple quotes. And then for the next function, so now when if, if we call display um, intro, even open and close, display intro, it's going to run that particular code piece. The print, the wait, and then the print. Uh, next uh, function we're defining is choose cave. So cave is an uh, equals an, an empty string. Um, so that's what we just have a variable cave, it equals an empty string. We're saying while the empty string does not equal one, and while the empty string does not equal two, print which cave will you go into, one or two? And the cave is now equaling the, the variable cave is now an input. So it's going to fill this input. I'm sorry, it's going to fill this empty string with the user's input. So it's going to print this. Print, it's going to ask us for the input. And then based on the input, it's going to come back and give us, um, we're, we're telling it which cave that we're choosing. So if I put in three, it's going to say while cave does not equal one and cave does not equal two, which is three, print which cave will you go into. So it'll print it again because I have a three. But if I put in a one, while cave is not equal to one, it is equal to one. So it becomes false. So it's going to stop right there and jump down. Um, and I just I just want to say at the last, we're returning cave. I mean, we're returning whatever the user inputs uh, back through the code. So um, if you put a one or you put a two, then this is satisfied to false. If you put in any other integer or anything else, if you write the number three, T-H-R-E-E, -E, it's going to say you don't equal one, you don't equal two. That's true. So we're going to go to which cave will you go into, one or two. So it's going to keep asking you. So when actually when, I, when we run the code, I'll show you that. Um, return cave. So next definition, we're doing check cave, chosen cave. So the check cave is the name of the function that we're going to define. And it's going to take an input of chosen cave. So somewhere in this code, we have a chosen cave input. So whenever we call check cave and we put in a number one or a number two, because that's what the input's gonna be for the cave, it's gonna print, you approach the cave, wait for two seconds. Then print, it is dark and spooky, wait for two seconds. Then print, a large dragon jumps out in front of you, he opens his jaws and print a blank line. We could have also done an escape n, and then wait two seconds. Friendly cave is now a variable that we have equals random dot ran in one or two. So it can randomly pick one or it randomly can pick two and that's gonna fill into the uh, variable friendly cave. If chosen cave equals the string of friendly cave, so the let's say the user chose cave one, 
and the computer randomly picks one, then if one equals one, which it does, print gives you his treasure, meaning that your chosen cave, you chose the friendly cave. But if you chose one and the computer randomly picks two, one does not equal two, that is false. So we don't get to this line, it goes else, and we print gobbles you down in one byte. So false just means that you did not choose the friendly cave. True means you did choose the friendly cave. That's what that code is saying. Uh, what do I have here? If line 42 and 43 is where the code starts. Okay, yeah, that, so I'll cover that at the end. Um, so all of this, when we when we debug it, it's gonna, it's running through all of this. It's not running it yet because remember, to find functions only get called. Um, I'm sorry, only get read from Python or from the computer when we call the function. So it doesn't do anything with this yet until we call it. Uh, then we have play again, the variable play again. It's starting off with as yes. While play again equals yes. So in order to start the game, it's got to be yes, right? So while play again is yes. So we go true or play again equals y. True. So we can actually run to the next code. So while it's true and true or true or true, either one just has to be true, not both. Um, display the intro. So we're calling a function here. Display intro. Display intro. So it's going to run this. It's going to run print, sleep, print. Once this is run, the interpreter will come to line 48 and start the execution. That's correct. And then it's going to run cave number equals choose cave. Now, remember before we said we knew somewhere in the code there had to be a, a, a choose cave, uh, chosen cave function, a choose cave rather? Well, now we're coming up to there. So after we do the display intro, intro cave number equals choose cave. So now we're calling the choose cave function. So I'll show you that in a second. And whatever the, we, whatever output we get from this, it's going to input it into cave number. So cave number equals choose cave function. Well, let's go up. It's gonna run choose cave function. What does that mean? Cave is empty. While cave does not equal one, it does not equal two. It, that's true because it's empty. Print, which cave will you go into, one or two? And then we are to select numbers one or two. If we pick three, it's gonna say, empty while it's going to say three and then while cave one die equal one or one equal two print this and it's going to print it again once we put a one or two in then it's going to choose cave is now going to take on a new value let's say we get two then it's going to turn cave number variable to represent the number two and then it says check cave cave number so now we're saying go to this function and run that function with this input well cave number we just saw Let's say, again, following our example, we picked two. So go run the function check cave using number two. So let's go up to check cave. Here we go. Check cave, and sure enough, we have to have our chosen cave, which we did. We have a number two. Print, you approach the cave. Wait two seconds. It is dark and spooky. Wait two seconds. Print a large dragon. New line. Wait. And then we have friendly cave equals random. Now the computer is going to choose a one or a two. We picked a two, and that's this here, our chosen cave. So if two equals, and let's say the computer picks one, false, he's gonna eat me. If I have two equals, and if the computer picks two, then two equals two, true, gives you his treasure. And then we're gonna go play again, and then it's going to ask us, because you can see down here, print, do you wanna play again, yes or no? Play again equals the input. And if I say no, then it's just gonna not do anything else because my only execution was for yes regarding play again. So I know it seems like we're jumping around, but really the code that's gonna run when we first execute is this, this block. All of this up here, all of this is defining the functions, one, two, three functions, that the code is now calling down here. So all it's saying is when we first run, we're gonna start off as yes. So that play again equals yes, true, okay. Display intro, run that function and do whatever it says to do. Take whatever inputs it asks to input. And then variable cave number equals the function choose cave, run that function now. Whatever you get, plop it in there. And then it's gonna say check cave function run that function using whatever we got output we got over here. And that's gonna run our entire code. So now with all that being said, let's actually go through and debug it so we can see it happening in real time. So as you can see, we hit display, uh, definition, 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 no code is run, we have no outputs, we're not even asking for anything yet. Play again is yes, while play again is yes, that is true, display intro. So I'm gonna hit F8 and you're gonna see what's gonna happen here on the right. F8 it, you are in the land full of dragons. 
wait two seconds because it ran this code from the display intro function and now we're stuck on the next line cave number equals choose cave i'm going to f8 through that and it's going to now go through the choose cave function where it's asking us right now it's empty is it a one or a two no that's true print which cave will you go into which cave will you go into let's say i put three it's look it's going to ask me again five not eight it's going to keep asking me because this is now giving me numbers that are not one and not two and that makes this true so it's going to run to print which cave will you go into sorry so if we take a one or a two which i'll do now i'll do one enter it escapes that code while cave does not equal it does equal one so now this becomes false so psh, we're done with that but cave input cave chose cave now has a value of one so when we come down here chose cave one equals one after we run this so cave number equals one so check cave cave number so this is the same as check check cave one so when i f8 what it's doing is it's running through check cave one so it's gonna print, you approach the cave, it's dark and spooky, he jumps out in front of you, he gobbled me down. So that's a bad outcome, right? And I know I picked cave one. So before, before I even go back and look at my code, I already know the computer picked two. Because if, it, if one was the friendly cave, then it would have given me his treasure, but it wasn't. So I'm gonna go back to check cave. It printed, it waited, it printed, it waited, it printed, it waited. Friendly cave, the computer did random rant it, and it picked two chosen cave which was one equals two false go to the else gobbles you down in one bite do i want to play again when i run through this function it's going to ask me that so let's just for the sake of funness because that is totally a word uh which cave we're going to we're going to pick one again you approach the cave wait it is dark and spooky a large dragon jumps out in front of you. He opens his jaws and he gives you his treasure. So that means now that the random in picked one, the friendly cave, and our chosen cave was one. So we're totally legit. All right, guys. I know I talk fast and I apologize for that, but this is excellent code to go through. It's it's this is great for defining functions and then writing your your code to go through the function. So as you can see, this is really simple. Whoops, a Daisy. Sorry. This is incredibly simple stuff to get through. Uh, even just this part here is, is not difficult to get through. But the coding part is coming into defining those functions. And that's where a lot of the juice is in. So uh, run through this code, have fun with it, play with it, um, even enjoy the game. And uh, we're going to do something later on. I'm getting tired of this boring uh, graphical user interface, so we're actually going to play with some GUI stuff down the road. Um, and I'll show you here. I'm just going to put no... And it's not going to know what to do, so it's going to exit it because we didn't give any we didn't give any stuff for no or for n. We only gave it for the word yes or the letter y. That's all we gave it uh, instructions for. All right, guys, take it easy. Have a great day. This will be in Python projects, and I will see you all next time.